One of the more sporadic great English talents of the late 60s through the early 80s was Duncan Brown, who released two albums between 1968 and 1973, then surfaced in the combo Metro in 1976, leaving them after one album, and then finally releasing back-to-back -back albums circa 1978-79, the second of which, the album Streets of Fire, yielded the wonderful track of, among many wonders, American Heartbeat. Everything I do is out of rhyme. The, the lyrics to this are not brand new, or so I'm gonna have to really hear it. I love the um no, the the high um, notes that he's accent sending over the chords right here. It's like the, the chord plunges, but he rises. I tend to like songs that um, use um, like like a a a flat minor um and go like to the relative major of b and then um down to like down to e um yeah but but bass scene in a a flat minor is just rare enough to um make the songs that use it well quite unique <laughs> to your American heartbeat. Uh, that um, pattern, that 7-8 bit right there. of like icy um, keyboard sustains with some staccato notes coming out, played um, by Tony Hymas. <laughs> I love that that uh, contrast as as the as the key um, drops to F sharp. He um, and it's and it's emphasizing like the low end octave. He he draw he jumps to the real high octave. <laughs>
freshness of it all, like the, those drums that are just like setting it off like cannons, like um, played by Simon Phillips, bass by John Giblin, and um, our guy Duncan. Pretty lean lineup, but very effective, and he produced the album. <laughs> I don't know if um, maybe another producer could have um, brought out more in the sound, maybe fleshed out more, made the lyrics a bit easier to understand. Um, like this would have been right up uh, Rupert Hines' alley, but um, I'm pretty sure Hine was really busy at the time with, with all the other, with, well, Anthony Phillips' saga. And um, let's see, uh, there, there's a... This album, though, has, has a lot going for it. There's um, this track, this instrumental that... Anyway, um, yeah, to look up some of the backgrounds of some of the people, Tony Hymas, who has... 36 appearances, despite being a very familiar name to me, has played with Henry Lowther, Jake Stallett Quartet. That, that's an interesting, interesting credit right there. Um, and um, yeah, I, I know him as kind of a Zual jazz rock guy from France. Um, Ursus Minor. Oh, not the one I was thinking of. Um, yeah, and let's see, John Giblin, very familiar name that we've seen around a lot, played in Brand X, played in Simple Minds, uh, apparently lent a hand on, hmm, had some involvement in Metro, although I, I tend to think of Metro as um, a trio of um, Duncan Brown um, and uh, Peter Godwin and Sean Lyons. I'm not Let's see here. Um, yeah, I don't think he, he was not a. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, both these guys. That basically, um, who's backing him? He, it seems like he, Duncan Brown, took the backing band um, of Metro. Um, apart from the like, basically, so so you could almost say that 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 first Metro album consists of like a, a core trio. And then, and then some backup players who weren't really part of basically the rhythm section. And he took, Duncan Brown took that rhythm section with him when he, when he uh, parted ways with um, Peter Godwin and Sean Lyons. Who, um, and Peter Godwin continued the band in more of kind of a Roxy-esque direction after he left. And um, let's see, Simon Phillips... You know, very familiar name with 706 credits on Discogs. Um, yeah, I, I regret not really being able to decipher the lyrics a bit better to that song because um, I couldn't quite get the meaning of it. Um, Simon, um, Simon Phillips would play on um, Michael Field's 1983 album, Crisis, among other things. Before this, he played with... Um, Chopin, yeah, that was the um, that was Anne O'Dell and um, Ray Russell, like Ray Russell's third ja jazz guitarist, Ray Russell's third um, like rock one-off in the span of like three years. The earlier ones being Running Man and um, Mouse. That Mouse album was pretty good from 1973. Oh, and Simon Phillips uh, played with Mr. Big, the English band. He he appears on the Photographic Smile album. Um, oh, he was on Murray Head, Say It Ain't So. Yeah, beautiful album. Um, he was on Jack Bruce's uh, 1978 Jet Set Jewel album, which didn't get released until 2003 for some reason. And um, he was on a Hair of the, he was on one song on Hair of, the, Hair of the Dog by Nazareth. Yeah, so this guy got around a lot. Albert Hammond, Gordon Giltrap, 
Um, Judy, he was on Sin After Sin, the Judas Priest album, and uh, Gary Boyle's The Dancer. Yeah, great album. Oh, and Listen Now by Phil Manzanera's 801. Oh, and a few more. Uh, yeah, God, during the late 70s, he was on just on a whole bunch of great things. K-Scope. Yeah, a lot of people were on K-Scope, including a couple of guys from Split Ends. Tim Finn sings a couple of tracks on that. Um, back over to John Giblin. Let's see a little bit more about his. Um, oh, John Gib Giblin was on Lenny Zakatek's 1979 album. Yeah, that, that, that album closes with two really great songs, Dancer and Couldn't We Try um, oh, he was, and Lenny Zakatek, of course, being within that whole, uh, Gonzalez ensemble, and, uh, Giblin was involved in that too. Um, Colin Blundstone, or B.A. Robertson, yeah, a guy who co-wrote some songs on, on Cliff Richard's Rock and Roll Juvenile album. Um, Face Value by Phil Collins, Johnny Borman. Hmm, even Johnny Bristol, Johnny Halliday, a lot of, God, Johnny's from, from three different countries right there. Chris Deberg, yeah, um, talent like this really gets around. And, uh, Duncan Brown, um, after, uh, Streets of Fire, he, he um, the Wild Places and Streets of Fire were the only two bands, the, the only two albums he released like like back to back. I, he he tended to be pretty sporadic. I'm thinking during the 1980s. I guess he recorded a soundtrack. Um, he became a lot quieter after this album, and then um, passed away unfortunately at age 46. Died, oh, died really close to my 20th birthday. Yeah. Um. For more uh, rubies and sapphires from Duncan Brown, see the directory of albums by English D artists linked in the description below for the four solo album propers that he released. 1968's Give Me, Take You. Um, wonderful, like, uh, Baroque pop record, um, like in the vein of Billy Nichols. With, um, and... Um, the 1973 self-titled release, another just excellent album, and then uh, 1978's The Wild Places, which carried on much more, which which very much followed in the, the vein of, of the Metro album. And then this one, which was a bit cleaner sounding, a bit uh, more of those like chorus guitar tones and such, um, a bit more in the vein, I would say, of, of certain aspects of, of Dire Straits. The non-rootsy side of Dire Straits, you could say, or Sniffing the Tears. Um, and for the uh, great Metro album that he appeared on in 1976, you can go over to the M directory, which is linked alphabetically at the top of the D directory. And uh, like and subscribe, and if you uh, know some of the lyrics or have more of an idea of what the lyrics were getting at, comment on that. And follow me on social media to know when the next video comes out. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled trimaximalist, signing off.